Welcome back to the channel, Luxurious Fleet. It's all about the Super today, and you're probably getting a lot of jacket noise today, but that's okay. For 2021, the Super is getting a power increase. It's getting a four cylinder, a special edition, and a manual trip. Just kidding on the last one, guys. It'd be too good to be true. But since I'm counting on my fingers, we know it's gonna be a great video. Smash that like button. I'll see you on the other side. Don't forget to subscribe to the Luxurious Fleet and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any breaking news or reviews in the future. Let's just jump right into it over at the Toyota Newsroom. Toyota GR Supra races into 2021 with more power and first ever four cylinder turbo model. And then here's all the, the models that they have. The right here is the two liter uh, four cylinder. On the left here is the standard one, the turbo six cylinder and then here in the middle is a special edition which we'll talk a little bit more in a second so the gr super 3.0 gets power boost and revised chassis tuning so now they're essentially they have two supers they have a 3.0 and a 2.0 so that is what they're calling them now the 2.0 is a first ever four cylinder version and this is just a matter of time we were getting all sorts of news of them coming to the european markets and and asian markets i think uh, but definitely the european markets and so it's just it was just a matter of time uh, the 255 horsepower and lower weight when i first broke this news on the four cylinder coming to europe i'm like you know maybe they're going to use uh the eight the eight ar fts or i always forget the exact naming of it that they use in the lexus nx and other lexus vehicles but that's the most common application of it uh, it's a two liter four cylinder motor produces around 240 horsepower depending on the application i'm like oh maybe this is just you know a, a revised no this this is straight bmw motor that they put in other uh, bmw products so don't get your your hopes up too much it is still a bmw motor but however it does come with a lower weight we'll dive into that as well gr super a91 edition with exclusive color and design features we got an we got a tip off of this exclusive cover, color uh, about a week or so ago. Toyota had a, just a little picture of the side, the front right tire and a part of the front bumper and fender of the, the upcoming Supra announcement. Well, we got the news now and this, this A91 is, it's pretty cool. And like I said, we'll dive all, we'll dive deep into all of these. Uh, it's nice that they're including the eight, eight, eight inch central uh, display screen standard. The first 1,500 Mark V Supras were launch editions and for 2021 Toyota is offering a thousand new A91 editions. Um, if you didn't know the Mark V Supra when it came out last year is called the A90. The special edition uh, will of course have the, the six cylinder and will be available in two colors nocturnal or refraction or the latter exclusive to the A91 edition in an all new color for the Supra. Accenting the Supra's concept car and spider body our rear black carbon fiber lip spoiler, matte black wheels, which like I said, we got a teaser of that wheel last week, C-pillar graphics and carbon fiber mirror caps. Black Alcantara leather trimmed interior with blue contrast is likewise exclusive to this limited availability model. And each A91 edition will come with two exclusive key gloves and a trunk mat. So on these A91 editions, the front Brembo brake calipers are painted, um, they're painted red and feature Toyota Supra logo. All Supra models for 2021 will feature uh, the 8 inch, the 8 point inch to be technical, uh, audio touchscreen that is standard on the 2020 3.0 premium model and the base model six and a half inch screen has been discontinued so the 2021 super models are expected to hit dealerships in june so talking about the power increase for 2021 uh, toyota is keeping the pedal down boosting uh, output of the supra's turbocharged three liter inline six from 335 horsepower uh, to 382 horsepower 14 percent increase Torque rises from 365 to 368. So they got this power by installing a new dual clutch exhaust manifold with six ports instead of two and a new piston design, reducing the engine's compression ratio from 11.1 uh, to 10.2 to one. Toyota projects that the new engine will reduce the Supra 3.0, right? It's not the 2.0, it's 3.0. <laughs> models acceleration to 60 time uh, to 3.9 seconds uh, down from 4.1, which is the same exact time as the 
RCF Track Edition, which is like a 90, 80 to 90 thousand dollar Lexus. I would still rather have the RCF Track Edition, but let's keep moving. So there's all sorts of retuned uh, chassis for 2021. You guys are welcome to read this. I'm gonna keep moving. Yeah, I, I do like reading that stuff, but it's very technical. And it's not as simple as just saying, oh yeah, the horsepower increase, you know, in this rev range. So just know that these are gonna make a better handling vehicle, a more responsive vehicle, and a more fun to drive vehicle as well. So to the Supra 2.0, it becomes an entry model, of course. It harkens back to when the Supras were back in the A70, the A80 eras, uh, they had two levels of performance. The 2021 Supra 2.0 offers an intermediate model between the 86 and the Supra 3.0, giving the customer three distinct sports car choices. I feel like this totally debunks a turbocharged Toyota 86. It would completely make the Supra 2.0 irrelevant. Uh, at least I would think so. Too bad, <laughs> it's kind of sad. It would be cool to see a boosted 86, but I think they're just gonna make that a cheap, fun to drive, naturally aspirated sports car. Could they put the two and a half liter in it? Yeah, but it might increase weight. But this, this article is all about the Supra, but I think this tip off right here is saying, hey, we don't have plans, at least right now, to make a, a high, higher performance uh, Toyota 86, even the next generation. Yes, we'll be higher performance than the current generation, but it's not gonna encroach on the horsepower, at least I wouldn't expect to, of the Supra 2.0. Turbocharged four cylinder, of course, has a twin scroll turbo, uh, direct fuel injection, uh, continuously variable valve timing, uh, intake and exhaust, on the intake and exhaust camshafts. This allows that, that pint size two liter to make 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque at just a, a 1500 RPM, that's very impressive. So this is where I was, when I first heard like, oh my gosh, they're going to have a two, the two liter four cylinder. And you know what, they could, what if they put the manual? Everyone's been asking for the manual because the BMW counterpart with the, the four cylinder can have the manual. Hate to break it to you folks, it is not going to have the manual. It's gonna have the same eight speed automatic transmission as the three liter. Zero to 60 time, in still five seconds, that is pretty darn quick, um, despite it giving up quite a bit of horsepower to the, to the extra liter counterpart, which will make it Toyota's second quickest vehicle in the lineup. So before I move on, what's kind of funny is they just announced the RAV4 Prime in the past few months. Um, it's gonna be a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And when they, they announce it, it's like, it's going to be the second fastest uh, vehicle in the Toyota lineup. Well, I guess technically it is uh, because the the Supra is just one model, but both variants of the Supra will be faster than the RAV4 Prime, which is expected to clock in at 5.8 seconds, zero to 60. So of course the 2.0 will be cheaper. It's also going to be lighter. It's gonna be more than 200 pounds lighter than the 3.0 while maintaining the 50-50 weight distribution that the 3.0 has. So why is this model cheaper other than just the motor being smaller and lower horsepower? Well, it uses smaller front brake rotors than the 3.0 and has single piston calipers versus four piston calipers. It does not have the active differential or the adaptive suspension used on the 3.0. Four speaker audio system is standard versus the Supra's 10 speaker <laughs> system. So a four speaker audio system, I don't I don't know what to think about that guys. What, what do you think? Is that kind of, does that sound way too cost savings, way too weight savings in today's modern era? I don't know. To me that, that sounds really cheap. And this 2.0 seats are manually adjustable versus a 14 way power adjustable and the 3.0. I actually like manual adjustable seats. I don't mind them at all because when you slide them forward and back, it's like 10 times faster than letting the little spiral gear electric motors to, to, to finally crank it forward or back. I like the manual adjustable ones for that. So that doesn't bother me at all. For you guys, you might be more bothered about the, the power seats than the lack of speakers. So there's a new safety and technology package for the 2021 models and it's available on both the 2.0 and 3.0. Um, what I found funny about this, not only is it very similar to like uh, Toyota safety system or Lexus safety system plus, we just talked about how you get the eight inch screen and all the models, but not all of them have navigation. You can still get a 12 speaker system in the four speaker 
2.0 and you can only get wireless Apple CarPlay with this package. I mean, this sounds like a very expensive package for how much technology they're putting in there and bigger speakers and, and other things. So very, very interesting. I have no idea what that's gonna cost. I do like this little graph here talking about the 2020 Super versus the 2021 uh, 3.0 and the 2021 2.0. So definitely feel like if you want to read into the specs a little bit more, uh, take a little screenshot and read it over. Uh, the rest of the article is talking about the racing variant of this vehicle, the GT4 Supra, and that will be on sale in August. So that was kind of un unexpected. Not the two lead, the 2 point or the two liter turbo four, that really wasn't that unexpected for me. However, what was unexpected was the massive power boost that we got from the 3.0. And we did have variants of this motor last year that came out with the BMW Z4, I think it's the M40i. I don't know why BMW is that well. They just have so many variations. But that motor pumped out the same horsepower as this 2021 uh, A90 will. We get this cool special edition, this A91. I like the trunk lid on it. I think it looks super sharp. It looks almost ridiculous, but that's what I love about the Supra because it is kind of a ridiculous vehicle. I love the matte black wheels on it. I like the carbon fiber finishes uh, around the vehicle. Paint color looks pretty sick too. Reminds me a little bit of ultrasonic blue Mica 2.0. And it is really good to see that they have an entry level Supra now with the 2.0. What breaks my heart, absolutely shatters it, is that there's no six speed manual transmission on any of them still. And I thought that that, that two liter would have been a perfect opportunity to give tuners, to give you know enthusiasts of shift your own gears, people like you guys, you guys gotta be feeling what my heart is saying, you know? Yes, they might be saying, well, if you want that, you can go get the 86, which I understand. I understand that the 86 is a phenomenal vehicle. We want options in the Supra. The Supra is an enthusiast car, so is 86. That's what these coupes are for. They're for enthusiasts. You have to have a manual gearbox. I don't care. I don't care if they're not as fast. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. They're not as fast, but you know what? When you're in a sports car like an 86, this 2.0 2 Supra, I feel like that's enough power for your average driver to be able to shift their own gears very satisfactorily. It is a challenge still to, to perfect your skills when you're shifting gears, but I, felt, I feel like that 2.0 is still a good amount of power. It's not overboard. I, I've driven the, the Subaru WRX and I felt like that was a really good amount of power for the six speed in that car. Any more, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it because you just run, run out of gear so fast. But anyways, I, I can talk about manuals all day, guys. What do you think about the new Supra? I think I'm very happy overall, the big power boost, an entry level one. I am a little sad that now that we have an entry level Supra, it doesn't sound like we're gonna be getting a turbo or boosted version of the 86. I just don't know what to think about that. I feel like a part of my heart has been taken because that, a turbo 86, would give us that manual with the high performance that we're looking for, right? That we, we should be getting in the two liter uh, Supra. So guys, it's been about a week since my last video. I've been busy, I've been traveling. I went to Chicago for training and I get, I've just been working my butt off. But lots of exciting stuff coming for the channel, guys. I wish I could tell you more. Um, I will have a video on the Chicago Auto Show, so stay tuned. And maybe we'll dabble in some Lexus news next time. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.